We have enemies and cannonballs existing in the same universe. They can even cross each other, but so far, nothing happens when they do. The reason nothing happens is, once again, the XNA framework isn't doing that job for us. It's up to us to say whether or not we want anything to happen if these objects collide with one another. Right now, we're not even detecting that they are colliding. We just happen to be drawing them near each other. Fortunately, detecting a collision isn't too hard to do. That's our next step. Find the update cannonballs method using the method selector. We are looping through each cannonball game object in the cannonballs array here. Now, find where you check if the cannonball object is alive. If it's alive, Move it and do a simple check to determine if the cannonball is off screen. Notice we can use the rectangle class for that check. That's actually a very simple collision detection scheme, and we're going to use something familiar here. Right after that check, just past the right curly brace, below continue, add a new line and type the following Rectangle. Cannonball wrecked. Equals new rectangle. Open parenthesis. Open parenthesis. Int. Close parenthesis. Ball. Dot position. Dot x. Comma. Open parenthesis. Int close parenthesis ball dot position dot y comma ball dot sprite dot width comma ball dot sprite dot height close parenthesis what we're doing is creating a rectangle that's the size of our cannonball texture, located at the x and y coordinates of where the cannonball is on screen. Now that we have a rectangle that defines our cannonball, we need another rectangle to check against. Specifically, we need to check it against the rectangle around the enemies to see if this cannonball hit any of the enemies. So below the code you just wrote, write this. For each game object enemy in enemies, open curly brace. We're going to check each enemy to see if the cannonball rectangle intersects with the enemy's rectangle. So let's construct the rectangle. Add this code. Rectangle enemy rect equals new rectangle open parenthesis open parenthesis int close parenthesis enemy dot position dot x comma open parenthesis int close parenthesis enemy dot position dot y comma enemy dot sprite dot width comma enemy dot sprite dot height Close parenthesis. Again, we're constructing a rectangle from the size of the image of the enemy, located at the coordinates where the enemy is on the screen. And now that we have a rectangle for that enemy, 
Let's see if the cannonball rectangle and enemy rectangle intersect. Add the following code. If cannonball rect dot intersects open parenthesis enemy rect close parenthesis open curly brace ball dot alive equals false enemy dot alive equals false break close curly brace close curly brace the conditional checks if the cannonball rectangle is intersecting the enemy rectangle if so that means they have collided, and if they have collided, we should do something about it. We'll do something simple for now. Just set the cannonball and enemy to both be dead. They will not draw on the screen if dead, so when the cannonball touches the enemy, they will both disappear. The break at the end tells the code to exit whatever loop it's currently in, which is the for each loop that goes through the enemies. Since the cannonball is dead after hitting one enemy, we don't need it checking the rest. The intersection code is pretty simple. It's time to build and run and see how this collision works. Right green arrow or F5? Xbox users, be on your connect to computer screens. Here we go. All right, ship's flying. Rotate your cannon, take aim, and fire. When you get a hit, the enemy and the cannonball disappear, just like we programmed it. The enemy regenerates instantly on the right side of the screen, random height and velocity, and we get another cannonball to fire. The collision is working. Notice that it's not pixel perfect collision. You can miss by a bit and still register a hit. It's one of the limitations of rectangular collision, but it's working enough to have a game. Last section for this 2D game, we're going to track the player's score and display it on the screen with text. Don't forget, if you need to catch up to where we are right now, you can just click Download Source Code to unpack a version of the project that has all the source code and assets for this section. And by opening that project, you'll be caught up. If you're ready to move on, click the next chapter.